we have a review question involving the Laplace transforms. And there's several parts there. Here we're asked to compute an inverse transform. Uh, in part E, we're asked to use a heavy side step function and solve an ODE associated with a vibrating system via the Laplace transform approach. And it gives you a little hint. You may find your answer from part D useful in the solution method to this problem. OK, so what we're going to do is work through step by step and just um, knock the questions over one by one. So the first challenge is to calculate the inverse transform of this particular function. Now if we look at the form of this function, you can write it as the following if you like. It's an exponential function times another function of s. Okay, in this case, big G of s would be um, s on s squared plus 1. Okay, now let's have a look down our table and see if this kind of form is located anywhere down the right hand side. Well, if we get down to here, we see yes, this form is, it, you, you can, um, the, the, the transform here is sort of of this form. If we look over to the left hand side, we see how to calculate the inverse transform. What you want to do is firstly calculate the inverse transform of big G. In this case, it's s on s squared plus 1. Then shift it, c units, and then multiply through by this heavy side step function. Now, this is, again, a special theorem called the second shifting theorem. OK, the second shifting theorem. OK, so. We're over here with a special c, c equals 1, a special big G, big G equals s on s squared plus 1. Let's apply this second shifting theorem and calculate the inverse transform. To do that, first of all, we, we, we get little g of t. Then we shift it, then we multiply through by the appropriate heavy side step function. That's the, that's the u, u of t minus c. Okay? The second shifting theorem. Okay, so this is the sort of general form in the inverse, inverse transform um, mode, if you like. Okay, so remember this is just a heavy side step function. All right. So in this particular example, we've got C equals 1 and big G of S equals S on S squared plus 1. So let's take the inverse transform of big G of S to form little g of t, shift it, multiply through by the heavy side step function. All 
right? We have to take the inverse transform of s on s squared plus 1. So let's have a look down our table. We get down to here. Well, that looks pretty good. If I let b equal 1, I'll get s on s squared plus 1 down the bottom. So the inverse transform of this would be cos bt with b equals 1. So it's just cos t. All right, so that's good. We've got little g of t. Let's shift it. So we replace t in our little g with t minus 1 in brackets. So if we put everything together, multiply through by the heavy side step function. In this case, it will be u of t minus 1. And we're done. Okay? Now again, you might not want to write down all of that stuff. You may just be able to to do it far more quickly than that. That's okay too. Any questions? Let's look at part E. Here we've got an external force acting on a vib vibrating system with a force represented by this function here. So we're asked to describe R in terms of an appropriate heavy side unit step function. Well, let's just sketch in, say, a graph of R. Now, does it look familiar? In fact, that is the heavy side unit step function where the jump occurs at t equals 1. So, this is actually a special heavy side step function. So, if we wanted to write it as a unit. Uh, heavy side step function, well here it is, right here, this U, U notation. Let's have a look at the last part then, which is far more involved. We've got a second order differential equation, linear, inhomogeneous, constant coefficients, and you've got some initial conditions. So in this vibrating system, R of t could be thought of as an external force. Y of t could be thought of as the displacement from the equilibrium point at time t. The initial conditions, y of 0 and y prime of 0 both equal 0. What does that represent? Well, it represents the, 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 the um, systems released from rest and with zero displacement. So the external force is really starting the movement of... Uh, the, the, for example, the spring mass system. So let's try to solve this, keeping in mind that we may find our, our answer from part D useful here. Now there definitely is a standard method for solving different, linear differential equations constant coefficients using the Laplace transform approach. The first step is to take the Laplace transform of both sides. The next 
step is to incorporate the transform of derivative, derivatives formulae, which are in your table. So that, and you incorporate the initial conditions. Then you simplify. You solve in the transformed space. Then you use inverse transforms to get back to your original solution. Let's take Laplace transforms of both sides. The Laplace transform is a linear operator, so that means I can break up um, any sums, um, for example, on the left-hand side. So let me do that in one step. Remember the curly L means the Laplace transform of what's inside the curly brackets. Okay, well, let's look at our transform of derivatives. We want to take the Laplace transform of the second derivative of the unknown function y. Well, if you look down here, or well, I've got g here, it doesn't matter. You look over here, this is the, the, the form, the transform of derivatives that we want to use. If we look over here, aren't we already uh, discovered that r of t is just the heavy side step function? So if we look down here, I've got the heavy side step function there. The Laplace transform is in this form, and in our case, c equals 1. So let's apply the transform of derivatives. Now, this one is sort of the derivative of the zeroth order, so I'll, I'll just leave that alone. So this is the Laplace transform of my heavy side step function, which is from our table. Here, with, and in our case, c will be 1. So it'll be e to the minus s over s. Now, notice I've slightly changed the notation here. Big Y of s really incorporates the, um, the fact that we're dealing with functions of s here. Okay, so let me just... write that in. Okay, so now what our job is, is to incorporate the initial condition. So let's simplify this and solve this basic algebraic equation for big Y of S. Okay, so that's going to be zero from that initial condition. That's going to be zero from that initial condition. I'll have a common factor of big Y of S then. So I can factorize and rearrange. The initial conditions uh, we have the following and then if we rearrange well we're going to get big Y of S equals um, e to the minus s all over s squared plus 1 bracket s. Okay, so we're at a good point now. We've solved the problem in the transform sort of algebraic setting. What we would like to do now is use inverse transforms to get everything back to our functions of t and our solution. So the question now is, how do you take the inverse transform of this? Well, if you look down the list again, it's very hard to see um, what to do here. So what I'm going to do is basically split this up using partial fractions, but in a very direct way. Okay, if I split that up, I'll, I'll get something like... Um, uh, so uh, I'll get an exponential times some simple functions, okay? Then maybe I can use um, the table. So let's see if, if we can work that out.
Okay, so I'll leave the exponential there uh, and try to think how I can write this in a simpler form that will help me uh, with the table. Any ideas? Add s squared to the top and take s squared away. That'll certainly, um, that certainly seems reasonable, doesn't it? So let's, let's try it. If I add s squared plus 1 in the top, s squared, and sort of bracket it up like that. And then I break this up into two parts. What's going to happen? Well, they're going to cancel off. I'll get 1 on s in the first term. And in, in the other term, I'm going to get s over s squared plus 1. Now, when I combine with my exponentials, does it look familiar? That's going to I have an e to the minus s here. <gasps> Goodness, it's the same. It's going to be the same. And if I combine with the e to the minus s in there, well, I can find that in my table with c equals 1. Yes. So, we're at a good spot. Our solution to our, well, I guess our initial value problem is just the inverse transform of this. So let's write it in this form and then um, see if we can easily calculate the, the inverse transforms. Okay, so instead of writing it in this form, I'm going to write it in this and just multiply through by the um, e to the minus s. Now, the inverse transform is also a linear operator, so let's just break that up into two bits. Now, okay, that is an inverse transform. Okay, they look a bit like pound signs, don't they? Anyway, this first inverse transform can be calculated directly from the table. Okay, we can just go down here, c equals 1, it's going to be the, in, the, uh, the uh, heavy side step function with c equals 1. This inverse transform has already been calculated from part D. Okay, the inverse transform was <laughs> this. So we can write both of those down. So here we've used a table and our result from part D.